So in this video, I want to talk about the quinolones, which are a class of antibiotics that target DNA replication. So again, this favorite figure shows here all the targets that we have for the different antibiotics. And the quinolones, they inhibit DNA replication. The quinolones are also sometimes referred as the phloxacins because they end all with phloxacin. So I've listed here the commonly available phloxacin, norfloxacin, cipro, ofloxacin, jami, levo, and moxifloxacin. And they also can be categorized by generation, which is going to help to understand their spectrum of activity. So what are the quinolones doing? They inhibit an enzyme which is called the topoisomerase 2. So what is the function of topoisomerase 2? So when you're replicating DNA, you're always going to have supercars ahead of the replication frog. And if you could not unwind the DNA, DNA replication would eventually halt. So there are this enzyme, the topoisomerases, that, that are responsible for removing this supercar. So how do they do that? So the topoisomerase 2 is a dual function enzyme. So what they do is that they cut two strands of DNA, move the helix through the break, and then re-ligate. So we have here an enzyme with a cutter and a glue. So now what is very important is that the quinolones, they inhibit the gluing function. So what is the consequence? that now the topoisomerase just generates double-stranded DNA breaks and just cuts, 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 and there's no gluing anymore. Because in the presence of quinolones, it's blocked. And therefore, you're generating just double-stranded DNA breaks. And the consequence is these antibiotics are bactericidal. What are some common adverse effects? So as for all of the antibiotics, you're always going to have GI distress. There is phototoxicity. So the quinolones make the skin more sensitive to sun. And then we have all kinds of muscle skeletal problems. So it turns out that fluoroquinolones um, cause direct toxicity to collagen synthesis and promote also collagen degradation. So you're going to get arthropathy because there's damage to the growing cartilage and also there can be tendonitis and tendon rupture. Furthermore, the quinolones block the potassium channels and therefore you expect QT prolongation. So always be careful in patients that have a history of arrhythmias. Because of the damage to the growing cartilage, you should not use them in pregnant women and in children. So now I want to talk about the spectrum of activity of these quinolones. And for the spectrum, it's worth putting them in generation. So norfloxacin are first generation, cipro and ofloxacin second generation. And, and then we have the newer ones, which are also referred as third or fourth generation, jimmy, levo and moxifloxacin. So first of all, you should remember that the quinolones are generally very good against gram-negative bacteria and are just increasing their activity over the generation for the gram-positive bacteria. So this is in contrast to the penicillins or cephalosporins, where we always have gram good gram-positive coverage and add on gram-negative coverage through the generations. So here we have always good gram-negative coverage and add on gram-positive through the generations. And the reason is that there are different types of the topoisomerases too, and the earlier ones predominantly affect the topoisomerase 2 of gram-negative bacteria. And just later on, they were able to have also an effect on, on the type 2 topoisomerase of gram-positive bacteria. So the first generation of floxacin starts with a very good gram-negative coverage. And you can, can remember the gram-negative coverage with our hand packs and capes. So what we have achieved in the last generation of penicillin cephalosporins, that's what we already start with the quinolones, hand pack and capes. However, please note that the P for pseudomonas in the capes I've written very small here because, because it's basically not covered. However, the second generation, ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin, are very, very good in covering pseudomonas. So here in the second generation, the P becomes big, and I've also marked that here, that the gram-negative coverage is, is extremely well. 
So in the second generation, we start to have some moderate gram-positive activity, which then increases even in this newer fluxacin, the third and fourth generation, including Jamie, Levo, and Moxifloxacin. Sometimes people call this newer fluxacins also the so-called respiratory quinolones because they have very good gram-positive coverage, so they cover strep pneumo, but also they can cover all the bacteria causing atypical pneumonia. So the only other special I want to mention is that Moxie and Jamifloxacin are very good in their anaerobic coverage and none of the other quinolones have a very good anaerobic coverage. So that's something to keep in mind. This concludes the video on the quinolones.